Carla Barrientos, who is one of the stars. I, I don't want to say stars. Do, you, is that, do I say stars? One of the featured uh, featured interviewees in the new Netflix documentary, White Hot, The Rise and Fall of Abercrombie and Fitch. It's coming out April 19th on Netflix, Bob. Did you know about this? I did not. You know, um, just to tell a little story to the, the audience, Matt saw the, the trailer pop up and he's all like, Bob, do you notice anyone in this? And, you know, I didn't second guess if it was one of our guests that we've had recently. So I was watching this video of just like half naked Abercrombie and Fitch models from like the 80s and 90s. I'm like, is that Matt? Is that Matt, right? And I was looking, and it was just—it was just a weird experience. Until the next day, he told me who it was. But you know, Matt, let's go ahead and introduce who it was in that. That, or let's give a synopsis of what we're talking about first. Okay, so uh, as I mentioned, we are joined by Carla Barrientos, who is featured in the new documentary, "The Rise and Fall of Abercrombie Fitch" on Netflix. Trying to piece this all together because it kind of it caught us off guard. We had her on for an uh, interview during Women's History Month. Yep. But now. There's this new documentary about Abercrombie and Fitch was a popular clothier, which is still very popular yeah. now. But if you grew up in the 90s and the 2000s, you work in retail. I mean, it was inescapable. It mm -hmm. was everywhere. So you're watching the documentary. The first voice you hear is Carla. And that's what just struck me. And then, and then I see Carla was like, holy S, this, <laughs> we got to find out more about this. Carla, I mean, how do, where do we even start with this? Because it's this documentary and there's obviously like the fun side of the 90s and the craziness and then it gets to the dark side. Tell us what's going on with this documentary. So this documentary really focuses on, and it's, it's called White Hot. And it really focuses on the rise and fall of Abercrombie and Fitch and our focus of the culture at that time, which it looked so different than it does now. You know, the, the focus was really about exclusion. You know, if you didn't fit into this, this box, you weren't in, you weren't cool. You know, it was before social media really is what it is today. So it, it goes into that and it's, it's great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. You know, I, you know, I, I can't wait to see it. So I, you know, I would, I would kind of like drop some notes about what we saw, but basically what, you know, because it comes out on April 19th on Netflix, I'll be, I'll be able to see it. Uh, but by the time when, when everybody's listening to this now, everybody is maybe have probably have watched the trailer. If you haven't seen the trailer, you should go watch it. It'll kind of get you prepared for what you're about to see when it drops on April 19th. As far as like my experience with Abercrombie and Finch and memories, this, I worked in the mall. I worked in the Valley Plaza mall where you worked at. Right? Did mm -hmm. you work in the Valley Plaza, Abercrombie Fitch, and it's still there. And I worked at Pac Sun. Yeah. I worked at Express. I worked at Structure. You know, I I was a, I was both a clerk and I worked in the back. You know, <laughs> I used to just unpack all that stuff and do all that, and it was I was limited, and I, I even worked at Bath and Body Works for a while and Sears and all that <laughs> stuff. But everybody now, like a lot of my peers, we all have these stories from the days and the nightmares of retail. Tell us about your experience with Abercrombie and Fitch. Uh, well, yes, definitely stories and nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, I worked at the Abercrombie & Fitch in the Valley Plaza Mall here in Bakersfield. And, um, you know, I wanted to work there because I, I liked the clothes. Mall culture was everything back then. I mean, yes, you hung it was. Out there, you, yeah, like <laughs> that, that's where you went to, to be cool and to see friends and, you know, talk and to get to your dis And to get your discount and show up at school like the next day with all rocking the best fashion, right? Exactly. You know, everything. So, I mean, I liked the clothes and I wanted to work there. And, um, you know, it, I mean, even just the marketing and the, the yeah. guys out front, there's definitely something going on there that, you know, kind of made everyone side eye. I know I did. Um, but, you know, I wanted to work there and uh, ended up getting hired to work the, the sales floor, you know, walk around, help people and kind of just hang out in the store um, and things quickly changed. Um, I started to notice that my hours, like if the mall closed at eight, I would get a shift that started at six and it would be, you know, half of my shift yeah. on when the mall was open and then half when it was closed. And I wanted to work, obviously what I thought I was yeah. the impression of being hired that I was there to be there when the. Mall so, so it kind of looked like you were not there during peak hours. You were there no. just to kind of clean up and close. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Golly. And you can ask my husband. Um, I do not like to do the cook, uh, the cleaning. I will cook all day, but I will not do <laughs> this job. The dishes are in the sink, yeah. honey, right? Yep. No, like, here, here, here's, the, here's the dust buster. Go get the dust bunnies that have, have, have accumulated under the clothes, right? Because that was the Valley Plaza, cut full of dust dust bunnies. 
Yes, because I just, I wasn't. <laughs> no, that's, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's how it ended up to go. And then it got to the point where all of my shifts started at the time that the mall closed. So I would oh, arrive wow. as they closed and I was cleaning up. I was vacuuming. Um, I was like, this is not my jam. And I went to a manager and I said, hey, I don't, I don't like cleaning. I want to be back on the floor. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I, you know, I, you're having here cleaning windows. And he's like, well, you're so good at cleaning windows. Oh, Lord. You're such a good window washer. And I was like. Now, 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 hold on a second, though, because, you know, when you work in retail, I mean, retail sucks. I mean, there's no way there's no way around it. It just and sucks. you do a bunch of just random things in retail, right? Like that that's like kind of the caveat, right? You, you work the floor, but like they have you do, you know, go I, fold the shirts. Yeah, I, I, go I've do done this. some disgusting Refold things them. with retail before, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, you do all that stuff. It's kind of a miser- miserable culture, you know, a miserable working atmosphere. But, you know, Abercrombie and Fitch, you walk by, the, you know when you're approaching it. I love mm-hmm. the, and the trailer kind of details that. You can smell the cologne a mile away. Yeah. And then, you know, once you approach it, the music is blasting. I mean, it was just like the oops, 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 oops. And I'm like, and then right outside, occasionally on the weekends, there'd be like a couple shirtless teenagers. Yeah. And I guess at the time, we didn't really, kind of, we don't really think about it. It was just kind of like part of the culture, you know, that, that 90s, 2000s kind of yeah. like, Almost anything goes. There wasn't, I mean, obviously it wasn't cancel culture back then. It was just like, uh, do whatever you want. It is kind of interesting that while there are other brands, there is the Pacific Sun and the, you know, the Buckle and like all these other places, Express and all that stuff. I don't recall them ever having any issues as far as like any sort of discriminatory lawsuits or questioning any of the, uh, the advertising was your work schedule like the first of a series of kind of red flags that popped up? And then how did it get to like when it started to get really bad? I, you know, I, it's funny you say other places didn't do this. And I thought, you know, well, maybe this is an isolated issue. Yeah. There's something I can change. So maybe I, had, I didn't see it. Right. Yeah. I mean, you know, I started to doubt myself. So I, I have a friend who worked there at the time. And, you know, I said there, I went to the manager. I, I told him because I noticed all my shifts were no longer day. Uh-huh. And he told me they didn't have any hours to give me during the day. Well, like my friend's like, no, look how many hours. And we're in college. I mean, they, they scheduled for like 20, 30 hours in one week. Mm-hmm. She's like, I don't, I can't even work this much. Swap me shifts. I'll work at night and you can take my day shifts. So I went to the manager and told him this. And he told me, oh, you, you can't switch shifts. What we assign is what we assign. And I knew something was up um, because that just didn't make sense. What's the problem? What, why yeah. can't we swap? You know, we have the same skill set mm-hmm. walking around the store, you know, straightening shirts. So I knew something was up and, and her and I had a conversation and she really said, you know, they're probably not scheduling you because you're black. Um, you're the only black person who works there. And and I, I was like, oh, I mean, you know, it, it, sadly, yeah. it wasn't shocking. It was more like, oh, why didn't it, I connect that? Right. Like it confirmed what mm-hmm. I I knew. What do you do in a situation like that when, when somebody says like that? Because that is obviously, I mean, now the way we're so well aware of, of how rampant discrimination is and, and, uh, and all that th- stuff goes on in the workplaces. And there's been, a, you know, a bazillion lawsuits against these huge corporations, these huge companies, you know, to prevent this type of activity. But like at that time, you know, what was your, what was your immediate response to that? Just, no, oh, I guess so. Well, what, how you did know, you I react? couldn't. I went back, I went to the manager and I tried to plead, like, what can I do to, to get you know, off of night this? shifts? Yeah. Right. Because to me, it just didn't make sense. Like I couldn't accept, like, there's no way that I'm being discriminated against. Like, this is so, I mean, I'm 19 at the time. I'm just like, this is crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean, it, I, I thought maybe it was like, um, it, it wasn't a systemic issue in the company. But it was. I mean, there was nothing I could have done. And I, after that, shortly after, I was scheduled zero hours. Um, never um, told that I didn't work there anymore. Mm-hmm. I was fired by no hours. And I went back. I wasn't on the schedule for months. And I told the manager, do I work here? And he's like, just keep calling and checking back. But they had phased me out. I mean. That's crazy. So no write-ups, no nothing. You just because you you spoke up for yourself. On, yeah. on, you know, just to kind of inquire. Not, not even spoke up. You just inquired, right? Like, yeah. hey, why am I working these hours? Like, we found it's, a solution. Why can't we fix it? Which right? is a natural because, you know, back in, when, when we were teenagers, you know, when you say, like, you only work a couple hours here and there, when you're a teenager, sometimes you're like, ah, that's okay. You know, because yeah. I can go in there a couple hours. I, I get a couple. I'll make enough money for, for gas money. But I really just want to go home and go party. 
right? <laughs> but I mean, you actually wanted to work. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I did, you know, I, I, but I, you know, part of it too was I wanted, oh, I wanted to make money and 19. Yeah. I want to go and hang out and do things and I need some cash, but, um, I wanted to work during the day. I mean, it's yeah. nice. It was fun being at the mall. Everyone who's worked there, I'm sure Matt, you had a great time at the mall. It was fun oh, yeah. hanging out at the mall. <laughs> You know, like it, that's the benefit, right? I'm going to be able to see my friends. They're going to come into the it place. Like that's one of the catches of working. Like every job has yes. more than just like salary perks, right? Like it's like, oh, I, I'm I'm a you know work at Abercrombie and Finch. I'm the cool girl, right? So I, I think it's just very funny because when you talk about these other stores, right? Like I had a sister. I will not had. I still have a sister, but she had a, a boyfriend at the time who was obsessed with like working out so he could become. Like uh, uh, one of those guys who stood outside Abercrombie Central Hall. <laughs> yeah. I swear, I swear, and I'm not making this up, right? And to me, like growing up, I was like, well, that doesn't look like clothes for people like me, right? Like that was just one of those things. Like it, it just, and I told Matt this, I was talking to Matt, I was like, it just never clicked to me when I was growing up. Like that was the place to go. Like that just wasn't it for me. But people who were just like one or two years older than me, that was an obsession for him. He was all like, yeah. this is what I'm going to do for my life. Yeah, obviously branding was everything. And Abercrombie & Fitch was one of those top tier ones because you did have, like I said, you had Abercrombie & Fitch, you had Tommy Hilfiger. I mean, and some of the stuff that is still around but not as popular, you know, Ed Hardy, the yeah. Ed Hardy brand. And then, uh, you know, you had Fat Farm and all those kind of like, all those those fashion, name, uh, fashion brands that catered to uh, – different sized people in different cultures. Uh -huh. So there was kind of like these glory days of all that. However, you know, name like Abercrombie and Finch, which has been around since the 1800s. If you look at the history of that particular brand, it is interesting how it became just kind of like a, almost like it started out kind of like a land's end place where, you know, your grandfather, the hunter in your family, like a Bass Pro Shops line, you know, <laughs> but if you look at the history, they 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 clothed uh, Teddy Roosevelt for his safaris, and and Ern author Ernest Hemingway was like a regular customer, and they're based out of New York. But then all of a sudden, it becomes kind of like part of this whole all. This is the all American brand, which that's that's fine I, in the campaigning because yeah. you know, like it's an American brand, it's out of New York, but now it's everywhere. And then you start seeing the messaging. If you do look at those ads, it'd be like the one really gorgeous, like. White skinny girl running away mm -hmm. from like 50 white dudes with no <laughs> shirts on. And, you know, they're all laughing. And, ha, ha, ha. You know, I'm like, yeah. man, I, I don't know why it didn't click back yeah. then. Like, this is this is not right. Yeah. And, yeah. and, the shorts and we were all above knew the it wasn't. I mean, it were everyone who would look would say there's something wrong. But, you know, we look at now where that would not fly these days. <laughs> and for good reason. You know, I mean, it was it, it had turned into you're out, you know, this is what's in, this is what's cool. If you don't fit this, you know, you're not cool. Um, and now it's not like that. You know, we, everyone has a space for them and it's beautiful. And if we can all be together in that space and accepting of each other and loving of each other, but that was not the case. I mean, it was, it was ugly. And, you know, I saw the all American brand and I thought, well, I'm all American. Let's yeah, go. You know? That's what I saw in the, in the trailer, in the, in the Netflix trailer. And I love you. You say, well, I consider myself an all American girl. Damn right. <laughs> <laughs> Why shouldn't you consider exactly. yourself an all American girl? You know, Carla, thank you so much for joining us. Are there any last remarks that you want to say about this documentary that's going to be uh, premiering next Tuesday, right, Matt? Yes. April 19th on Netflix. Yes. You know, I really just want people to watch it. Um, and, you know, it, it, definitely is nostalgic for many of us who have some tie to Abercrombie, whether we walk past the mall or work there, but it's really a film that I think everyone will enjoy and really just eye opener. It's a great film. I'm really looking forward I'm, to it. I'm super excited. Like yeah. I like documentaries like this and not only do we get to learn about like discrimination in general, right? But like a history of a brand that still exists today. And, you know, and then uh, to me, it's very interesting because then you look at the marketing and how things change, how brands change over time. That's really interesting. So I'm super excited to watch it. If you know Carla in, the, in Bakersfield, mm -hmm. you already know that she's gone up and beyond the read days of retail as most of us have, you know, those, those kind of crazy, we all have those crazy stories, but we're all very well adjusted into the community and we are community leaders. And Carla is definitely one of those persons. Like I mentioned, we've had Carla on the show during women's history month about her work in the education field and working with uh, children with disabilities and, uh, and offering children resources. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like, I think those trials that we went through during retail, it kind of makes us who we are. Yeah. We, don't, we want to prevent other people from going through this. So, Carl, I'm really excited about looking at this documentary. And congratulations, you know. 
If, if congratulations is a good thing in this case, <laughs> but uh, but everybody's pumped in Baker, so we're like, that's Carla, that's Carla. So you kept a really good secret. So all the people at Netflix, uh, maybe give her a raise or like a bottle yeah. of champagne or something. For give her another that documentary, right? <laughs> we'll figure, we'll figure some, another lawsuit she went through. But you know, Carla, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Uh, and and me and Matt are, are so so excited to watch this. And uh, uh, thank you for joining us on Real Talk. Oh, thank you both for having me.